my interest in, in this is that we're trying to form, as you may know, the, the South African Identity Federation, which will be a SAML-based federation. And so we had already set up an identity provider for that. And I asked Rob the question of whether that identity provider could be used with, with video. So one of the reasons that I was keen to do that is that giving LDAP access to a third party gives them quite a lot of access into your um, backend infrastructure and the sort of access that I'm not entirely comfortable giving a third party provider. Um, SAML on the other hand is, is designed from the ground up with, with privacy in mind and it has consent engine and, and things like that. Um, and so for me as an integration with an identity integration with a, with a third party product, it's more attractive. Um, it also solves one of the problems that bugs me, which is that we want to be able to say to our users, there is only one place that you enter your Rhodes username and password, and that is login RUXA, which is our identity provider. And any other website that's asking you for a username and password is trying to fish for your password. We're not there, but this is part of the solution to that. So Rob gave me a test instance, and I have set up and got SAML working in that test instance. Uh, and, I, and I'll walk you through the, the steps in that uh, in a minute. Um, unfortunately, I can't demo it actually working, because as I mentioned when I first joined, but not all of you were here, um, we currently have no power, and so I'm on my laptop, and the, everything I set up for this presentation is on a desktop PC that's currently switched off. Um, anyway, so the, for those of you who are in the LDAP presentation, it's, there's a lot of similarity between them. Uh, um, I'm just going to make this thing share my screen quickly. Okay, so this is the, the login interface, the, the normal uh, admin login for, for video. Um, and I'm just going to log in. And under settings, which is where all the authentication settings are, um, there's this authentication tab. And at the top of this, you, you can choose the authentication type. So, so if you choose LDAP, that's how you'd configure this for, for using an Active Directory or something like that. Uh, and, and for this purposes, we're looking at SAML. And this asks for some, some reasonably basic information from a SAML identity provider. The, the first bit here, all of this data here, is the identity provider's metadata. Um, if you have a SAML IDP, your identity provider is already producing this. It's a matter of copying and pasting the, the metadata. So this here is our um, SAML identity provider, and it will let me show the, the metadata of our existing um, identity that's already set up. And all I've done is copied and pasted that um, into the box there. So th that is used to establish one side of the trust relationship between video and our identity provider. Um, the, the next line here, the entity ID, is the, the unique identity that um, identifies this service provider to my identity provider. Uh, video will auto-populate this as it has here with, with the name of your video in instance, but you can change it if you need to. Um, I didn't really see the, the need to. Um, the, the next two things I don't really understand and the documents are not really clear about, but the documents say that if you don't um, know a different answer, select PKIX, um, and that is the default, and that works with both Shibboleth and with Simple SAML PHP. And so, yeah, if, if somebody else can figure those out, I'm interested in knowing what they do. Um, the, the next bit is whether or not the, the local SP's metadata should be signed. 
this really depends on what your identity provider's policies are. Um, but by default, neither Shibboleth nor SimpleSaml PHP require signed metadata. They can use it if you provide it. Um, but it was simpler for me to to just um, leave it disabled. Th this bit here, SAML provision type, talks about um, how accounts are provisioned within this video instance. So SAML provision type, SAML means take the the data that we get from SAML and we use that to auto provision an account on Fideo. Um, I'm going to skip over this and I'll come back to it just now. And the last button there, view the service provider metadata. This is the other side of that trust relationship. So this here is my identity provider's metadata, which I have to take from my identity provider and um, paste here. This gives me the service provider's metadata here, which I need to take and I need to paste into my identity provider. Now, quite how you do that will depend on what identity provider you use. Um, in in Simple SAML, for instance, you need to convert that to a PHP file, which you import into Simple SAML. In, in Shibboleth, you just copy and paste it. Um, I don't have enough experience with ADFS to know quite how you do that in ADFS. Um, but that corresponds over here. This is back to our identity provider. Um, so there is the is the, the the same metadata encoded in Simple SAML PHP's format already configured in our in our identity provider. So those two bits of metadata are, are responsible for the bi-directional trust relationships. So video trusts login Rex A and login Rex A trusts video. Um, that's the bit that you need to make authentication work. Authentication on its own doesn't really help and it really doesn't help with provisioning because you need to be able to provide other attributes. Um, simple samples metadata already includes some attribute mappings, um, but there's a problem with them, which I'll get back to in a second. And you need to create some attribute mappings on the, the video side to be able to convert those into stuff that video uses. So those of you who looked at the attribute, uh, at the LDAP presentation would have seen a same thing between LDAP attributes and, and video attributes. So this is between SAML attributes and video attributes. So this was the thing that took me a long time to figure out because this column here that is labeled SAML IDP attribute name is kind of misleadingly named and the documentation is not clear. It turns out that what you actually have to use in here is the attributes as they're named in the SAML assertions that get sent. There is no attribute map that turns that into nice, meaningful names. So on my identity provider, that username field is in fact called UID, and UID is in INET org person. It's the same field I would have used if I'd done this with LDAP, and I kind of expected to be able to type UID in there because that URN that is shown there is the, the INET org person URN for UID. Um, after much scratching of heads, I discovered that that was not what it was expecting. What it was expecting was the encoded form of that. So what goes into this field really depends on what your IDP is configured to send. If your IDP is a SAML1 IDP, it will default to using MACE format attribute names. And if it is a SAML2 IDP, it will default to using um, OID format attribute names. Or you can configure it to send them in any other format you like. Um, the important thing here is that the name ID format that you use on the SAML side must be what you represent it in here. So our IDP defaults to using OIDs, and that will be the default for the Sapphire Federation, which is partly why we, we did it. Um, and so these correspond in, in our attributes to the, the UID, um, 
to the EduPerson primary affiliation, um, to the display name, and to the mail attributes. And, and those are the same names that Sapphire use in, in their attribute naming. Um, and so, in fact, if I disappear off at a tangent slightly, um, Siju published for Sapphire, if I can find them quickly, this here um, attributes for, for the Identity Federation. And so you, you'll see there the mappings between mail, the attribute name, which is what LDAP people will be familiar with, and a UR. Um, an OID based URN, which is which is what the IDP is sending and what I've entered in here. Um, just the same as as the the LDAP case, you can provide a default value if the um, identity provider does not send data. Um, and just as LDAP, you can you can um, do some sorts of provisionings here. Um, let me just expand this. Um, the user type lets me map an attribute on my side into different types of um, Video user um, types. So there's an executive user and a normal user within Video, and this matches the value of that attribute that I set. So if my EduPerson primary affiliation is staff, that in Video translates to a normal user. So the way that this is configured at the moment with executive blank and, and staff as normal has effectively precluded any of my students from using Video because I don't have a mapping for, for the, the primary affiliation student. So my identity provider will, will send a primary affiliation depending on whether people are, are staff or students within, within our institution. Um, the the remaining ones here that I've left un, undone are because the, we don't currently use those within vi, within um, video, but th there's no reason, for instance, that that we can't set up a group mapping that provides a, a video group based on groups that exist in um, my identity provider, um, and ditto the rest of those. So. I said that there was a problem with the, the service provider's metadata, so it, it, it relates to exactly the same thing. Um, if I don't know if it's easily visible in here, but part of this here, there is the set of required attributes, and it specifies them in URN format, but when that translates into my identity provider, my identity provider is expecting the internal mapping names for those, and there is no translation done. So when I first set this up, the, the metadata told my identity provider it wanted attributes that my identity provider did not have and was not able to send. Um, and I had to kind of hand edit the metadata to be able to, to fix that. Um, and that was about all there was to it. I save that and I can log in um, and, it, and it kind of just works. The, where was I? In, in the user tab here, when, when I create a, a user um, by logging in, they, they get auto-provisioned and they exist as a user here. So this, this user here is auto-provisioned off our identity provider and you can see at the top it, it tells you it's an auto-provisioned user and I can't do anything other than enable and disable it. What happens is that every time I log in, my identity provider resends attributes and those attributes get updated on the video side as well. You'll see that the, the top attributes here are required attributes and, and that follows through into that attribute mapping. It doesn't actually work unless you provide those four attributes in your attribute map. All the others are optional. Um, and that is about all there was to setting it up. The the you know once once you have an existing SAML ID IDP that can be used via service provider, this is very simple to set up. 
The one caveat that exists at the moment is that it is not possible to do this through a federation. So when the South African Identity Federation gets up and running, you will not be able to use Sapphire to automatically select which instance. Each instance has to be configured independent, independently and has a different entity ID. So that that means that you need to make the relationship directly between video and your own identity provider. It can't be done via a federation. Um, I would like to demo it working, but unfortunately I can't. Um, and the reason for that is that um, video desktop will only run a single instance at a time. And that means that I will disconnect this call if I try and demo it working. But what I should be able to do is get at least as far as the first bit. I'm just going to try this. I've not um, not tested this because um, I'd intended to do this in a virtual machine. OK, so I, I went here to are you tests um, VC10 at ACZA. That is, that is the, the video instance that I've been setting this up in. And you'll notice when I went to the front page, it automatically redirected me to Rhodes' login portal. Um, and, and I can log in here with my Rhodes credentials. Um, ah, right, there we go. Okay, so yes, as I expected, because I can only run one instance, it disconnected me as soon as I completed the login. Um, so what you don't see then is the video desktop actually knows my name and it's as if I'd logged in by any other means. So the, the, the constraint in login is that I have to start from the web interface. I can't start from the login um, part of, of video desktop. Um, but that's, that's not the end of the world to explain to users. And that's about all there is to it. I don't know if anybody has questions. The um, observation is that video won't go through a discovery service, as you said, so you, yes. can't, you can't use it for the federation. My understanding is that this is something that may well be enabled in a future release. But, um, it, it is in their roadmap. Um, but where maybe next year, early next year, we're not quite sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it's something I will I will I will take out with video and say this is actually for academic use. This is obviously something really important. Um, so, so the the big advantage of of having it going through a discovery service w would mean that there would the, the integration steps that I've just shown you would happen once with the federation, and and then would automatically happen for everybody who joined the federation. And that as soon as you join the Federation, the mappings would all be there and it would just work for you. Which is the whole idea of the Federation. Do it yep. once and everyone benefits. Yep. Uh, my other question, guys, you said that to, so if we'd actually be able to see before you just spit in the puff of blue smoke, um, um, the amazing disappearing guy, um, that if we'd actually be able to watch what you were doing there, you would have, you log on to video through test vc uh, yeah, in the web browser. You go to a web browser, you authenticate with the Rhodes IDP, and then it fires up video desktop. So, so I, I already have video desktop running. If you don't have it running, it, it prompts you to start it or download it. OK. Um, but because I already have it running, it, it, it has some sort of back channel that it uses to communicate that there are new login credentials. All right. Any other uh, questions on this? And so effectively what happened there was I got logged out of this session and logged into a different session. The demon phone again. Good morning. Yeah. Um, OK. Um, so anyone wanting to, I mean, I think, any other sample shops? Because I know you're, you're not. You're not an active directory shop, are you, Guy? Um, no. We, we use e-directory, but, but we have played around with the LDAP stuff as well. I mean, the LDAP stuff is very, very simple. The, the only thing, for those of you who went on the call a couple of weeks ago, is that you need to give access to the video portal, uh, which is just you know, 
the, the, the one IP address and to your help that server for your file. That's all you need. That's, that's the major gotcha on that. Everything else seems to be perfectly straightforward uh, for those of you who understand that directory. Um, yeah, there is a there is a another caveat that if you don't set up the the account that you use within video, um, if you don't limit the attributes it can see, it can effectively see everything about your users. And so you want to think quite carefully if you're doing the LDAP side of things, what access you're giving video to your AD. And that, right. that's just a privacy and security issue. A lot, a lot of what I showed you makes a lot more sense, I suspect, if you've played around with a SAML IDP. So if you've never seen SAML's metadata before, that XML looks horrendously confusing. But the reality is I don't actually need to know a lot about what's in it. I just need to know how to copy and paste it into my IDP, and it knows what to do with it. And that, and that point you made about the fact that you need the actual coded Entity. That, that is the bit that is not in video's document, okay. um, and, and, and took me ages to figure out. And that is the one thing that hopefully other people will will benefit from my experience, <laughs> because well, I spent hours trying to figure that out. We're very grateful to you guys for, um, for having problem that particular part.